My name is Jody Furrick. I am the owner of Barrelhead Winery here in Dubuque, Iowa. Uh, my husband Aaron and I actually own this together and we got started because we actually visited Barrelhead Winery on my 40th birthday a few years ago and our entire goal that an entire weekend was to visit other wineries in the Dubuque, Galena region, I guess we could say. We had gone to Park Farm we had talked to another couple that was there and we just wanted to know if there are any wineries in the area that specialize in dry reds because Aaron and I both enjoy dry red wine. They said, yes, you have to go check out Barrelhead Winery. And we were like, oh, it's not on my list. Tell me more. And so they gave us a little simple little explanation. We're like, all right, we Googled it. We came out that day and we very much fell in love with this property. It's a little slice of heaven. We fell in love with John and he um, was such an inspiration in to his passion of winemaking and um, exploring what wine can be. So um, Aaron and I had been making wine in our basement for quite some time um, back in Wisconsin. There is something very special about this place and if I can continue it, we need to do it. I said, you know, maybe this is God's plan that you should be an apprentice under John and learn John's way. So he comes down to Iowa basically like mid-January, tells John that we want to buy him out and we want to learn how he makes wine. And he said, well, you know, we came at a very good time because on Monday they have an appointment with a realtor to um, put it up for sale. And he goes, oh, we're pumping the brakes. We, we need to know more. We need to talk numbers. Um, Jody and I will come down here next month and we will talk about this. And he said, yes, Fidelity Bank said yes. We had everybody, was everything was appraised and we closed June 23rd of 2023. John with his sparkling wines had won double gold in an international competition, which is very much unheard of. Um, and so, Knowing that we are learning the process of making wine from John and literally letting his legacy live on through his winemaking, we know that we can get there as well. So we do grow most of our varietals here. Um, we do get a Chardonnay and a Riesling out of California because it's just too cold to grow them here. Otherwise, we would grow. Um, we hand pick everything. We do not have a machine that comes through to pick. And we crush and de stem. We have a big machine that we put that through, but everything is done by hand. Like we bucket by bucket, put it in there ourselves. And then when we um, start fermentation, we transfer everything into tanks and we will start fermentation and mark making wine. Over the course of, I don't know, three to seven days is when that fermentation will begin and end. Um, and then after that, we kind of just let it do its thing in the tank, or if it's a red grape, um, we will then transfer those into oak, French oak barrels. Aaron and I refuse to add chemicals in order to hurry up the winemaking process. I want that wine to do its thing um, and be the best that it can be. Um, we do offer dry reds is really what we specialize in. However, we, we try to make sure that there is something here for everybody. We want to include everybody. So we do have semi-sweet reds, we have dry whites, semi-sweet whites, we have fruit wines, dry and sweet, and we also do a dessert wine that we are currently working on. So my favorite currently is our St. Croix. Um, it's got notes of deep cherry, it's very well-rounded. My other favorite is our Petite Pearl, which has notes of cherry, and then uh, it kind of mellows out mid palate to a cola. And then for my whites, I would say a dry St. Pepin. Our St. Pepin is the most similar to a Pinot Grigio. It is a, a, a green grape, has notes of pear and apple with um, a little lime twist at the end. La Crescent is always very popular as well. That has more notes of citrus, grapefruity. Um, it's, it's very crisp, very crisp. I'm really hoping in the next year or two, we can create like a she shed or like an Airbnb or a place to stay with running water and a bed. We had a wedding here this last May um, and we have other people who've asked us if they could get married here. 
you know, maybe that's a thing. We would really love in the future to have a wine club as we have so many people that are interested, especially people that live out of state, people that live near Chicago, people that live in Minnesota or Wisconsin that can't get down here as much as they would love to. So we are open 12 months out of the year. We are currently only open on Friday from 1 to 8 p.m. and then Saturday and Sunday from 10 until 5. In the summer, we seem to be having music on Friday nights from 5 until 8. Um, and on Saturdays and Sundays, we have live music from 1 until 4. We do have cheese and crackers available to purchase. Otherwise, you can also bring food in if you would like. And we also have beer available for those who do not like wine. And we have bottled water. It's, it's quiet out here. It's significantly simpler. The people that you meet here are amazing and they literally just, either they'll, they'll chat you up or they'll just enjoy it with you. And I think that's the difference is the beauty of everything around you. And the wine just happens to be super amazing.